Good morning, Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church. We welcome you to our service this morning. We're taping now, but um, we will have this up on YouTube in a bit. And for those who are listening in the hospital, uh, that's maybe Bob, and Grandma at home, and Sararis, and others that might be turning in, we welcome you in the name of the Lord to our service. We put together our whole service all the way from birthday songs and whatever, but we start off with a couple kids' songs, and they go like this. <clears throat> Don't build your house on the sandy land. There's sandy land out there. Watch out. Don't build your house on the sandy land. No, don't build it too near the shore. Well, it might look kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice. Yes, you'll have to build your house once more. you got to build your house upon a rock. The foundation of the sun is fun. Oh, the storms Good. He owns the cattle on a thousand <laughs> Cattle in the Bible are sheep, goats, anything you want. It is a generic word. It's uh, four-legged creatures that usually could milk and eat meat and do whatever. Okay, so here's the cattle. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. He owns the rivers and the rocks and rills, the sun and stars that shine. Wonderful riches more than tongue can tell. Father, so they're mine as well. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I know that he will care for me. Well, that's good singing. Thank you. Uh, good words. Um, we have uh, birthdays, and uh, Pauline uh, of our group here uh, had a birthday yesterday. And uh, so she's probably not listening in. She's down in Kelowna celebrating with her daughter who had a birthday yesterday, Anissa. So uh, we uh, know those folks and fondly think of them. So their uh, birthdays were celebrated yesterday. And if you're anybody else around here, Glenn, you got older? Luke did. Okay, Luke. Okay, happy birthday, Luke. And if anybody else at home had a birthday, then uh, uh, I'm kind of thinking Pierco did from the hospital uh, as well. But anyhow, uh, congrats, happy birthday. Anybody get married longer than they were before? No? Okay. All right. Well, happy anniversary if you had an anniversary. And the song uh, we sing goes like this. <coughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again through salvation. How many have you? Born into the family of our parents, take you home, this cuddly little person comes home from the hospital, smiles and all those things, and first tooth and first steps and all those things. And they grow up and they graduate and uh, they go off in the world and then the circle of life goes around again, hopefully, for the grandparents. Um, uh, you get genetics from grandma and grandpa and all those things, but in the family of Jesus, you get to be like him. And as you grow up and whatever, you get to be more like him. And uh, that's actually a, a concept from a, that uh, he, his genes are put into us. And we sing one of the songs, his royal blood flows in our veins. And uh, wonderful thought about being born into the family of God through relationship with Jesus Christ. We trust you understand that. Uh, our church, our ministry here is about knowing that story. We have a cross on behind me. There's a cross on the front. And our story is about knowing Jesus and him crucified, dying for our sins. Uh, so we welcome you in his name to our service of worship. And uh, we're going to have some worship songs now. We call them worship songs. They're uh, just uh, shorter hymns usually. Jesus' name above all names. He's uh, given that name which is above all names. And that puts his name according to God. He says, I want my son Jesus to, be, to be, even have a name higher than Jehovah uh, in essence. Because this name means Jesus saves. And call his name Jesus. He will save his people. Jehovah means I exist. And, uh, and I'm the always present God, but this one here saves, and his name is above all names. Let's sing it. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God. Jesus, please come among 
God will be with us, our blessed Redeemer, living word. And then one other verse says, was that our second one? <clears throat> no, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. This is a great one. We know the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. What? That you had a good night's nice rest, or at least that you woke up. Uh, it's only not a mercy if you know Jesus and you're waiting to get out of here. Then it's not a mercy. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth I'll make known his mercies. <clears throat> I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness. get up any morning and sit down and journal what the mercies of the Lord have. I feel not too bad. I slept good. I don't have a headache. I, uh, my back doesn't ache and whatever. Um, my uh, throat isn't sore from laying on my back snoring and uh, those things. All mercies of the Lord that God gives, but greater than that, eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy as we face our day and whatever comes. We um, welcome you, if you happen to be turning in late, to our worship service, Chapman Fellowship Baptist Church, Pastor Bill Evans here, and um, we've got, we're shut down, um, it is what it is, we can't do anything about it, we're taping the service to put out there, and um, whatever other parts of the province are, I heard uh, the Monday or tomorrow, they're going to open things up, and uh, the bars and all those things in the other places, but we've got issues here, and uh, in the north, and um, we're shipping people out of here to other places, other hospitals, because ours are uh, filled up enough where we don't have the staff. Like Chetland Hospital really has staff. And uh, so, but one of the wonderful things is for me, I'm able to go back and visit at the hospital. I've been seeing Hetty and Bob Nicholson and, and whatever, and I'm just rejoicing. Why? I've got double vax, and uh, it just liberates me uh, to do those kind of things. Uh, so, anyhow, uh, we want this morning to uh, just encourage you to uh, keep looking up. And for our church service, I say there's nothing on. Uh, the uh, ladies had, a, they were all those who were double vaxxed, were able to come and have a little luncheon meeting on, on Thursday, and they did that. Uh, the youth, I'm not sure is happening, but that'll be posted on the youth website uh, if anything is happening with them. They have different criteria, and I thought I heard they said they were shut down and whatever, but check that out, uh, please, there. But um, we welcome you in the name of the Lord and just pray, and uh, we'll get through this together. This is our plan, and it can be hard. But um, uh, thank you. And so we'll uh, carry on in our worship and uh, take our first hymn, and the love of God. And uh, back in the old days, we'd say, well, stand with us. So stand with us if you're a church mouse or whatever, and uh, we'll, we'll sing, of the love of God is greater far than any tongue or pen can ever tell. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair fell down with care. God gave his son to win. His inventory reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how oh, rich and good, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When years of time shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall. 
bow with us in prayer. Let us pray together. Father, we want to thank you for the wonderful love of God. God so loved the world, your word says, you gave. Father, a scholar, a child of yours, made this statement one time. God is incapable of giving us anything but good. That's the love that he has for us, incapable of giving us anything but good. Discipline is good. Whatever comes in life is good. He says he works all things after the counsel of his own will. You are incapable of giving us anything but good. We thank you for that this morning. We thank you for the words of this hymn, the love of God, how great. Where, where every stock, every piece of grass uh, in the world used as a writing tool uh, to write the love of God, dipped in ink of the blood of the cross, to write that love would never be complete in all of eternity. The world couldn't, the ink if the, couldn't be, the oceans were used and would not be accomplished. So great, marvelous, and powerful is the love of God. We trust, O oh God, that those who tune in today would know, experience, and hear that wonderful love. The world offers a different love. There's erotic love. There's love that's spoken of in the movies. There's just nonsense. But God has a forever love, a caring love, a love that gives to the utmost. We bless you for the privilege to know that love as it was shown in his son Jesus, who left heaven's glory, the beauties of heaven. We talk about grandma going to heaven and oh, it would be so wonderful there and whatever. He left all the beauties and the glories of, of heaven and came and hung upon a cross for our sin. He cried, fathers, we hung them there. Do not put this sin upon their charge. They do not know what they've done. And the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked, your word says. And so they cheered on as he was crucified. And he cried those words, Father, forgive them. But he also cried, it is finished. The work of redemption was done. He raised, was raised from the dead. And he's raised to your right hand ever to live and make intercession for us. And so we are glad to know that he's praying for us today as we worship, as we listen into this worship service, that our hearts will be encouraged. We pray, oh God, for those who are in need of a touch from yourself. We've heard of a man on the Radio Fort St. John area, and his wife's in the hospital in, in a COVID coma, and her little baby's 27 weeks along. We ask, oh God, for help that you give the doctors and the, the medications they're using, whatever, the, the, the blessing of healing in that life and that the two would be spared, and that the man would have help for dealing with his, uh, his emotions through this story as well. We ask, God, uh, for your grace to be upon them. We pray, Father, for Val in Vancouver. We hear that she's to open her eyes a little bit this week. We pray that she might continue to be raised to health and strength to be sent back home. I hear the prayer of her family and our prayer as well. We thank you, Father, to hear that Jamie's home and uh, from her aneurysm that she had. And, Father, there's just others that just need you, need a touch from you, and uh, people in the cells in jail and, and hurting hearts and broken homes. And, God, we need an outpouring of your mighty spirit in these days across our land. We ask, God, for your grace to prevail and protect and help your people. Give us wisdom, direction, and help through these days of struggle. And, uh, Father, encourage our hearts. Help us to be aware, to lift up the hands that hang down and to strengthen the feeble knees and to give a word of encouragement. And if nothing else, oh, God, if nothing else, that we might share a smile so free and so rich in its deliverance, oh God. So receive our thanks for this time and each one who listens in. Bless each heart and each home represented and encourage us. We thank you for Glenn and his expertise and his willingness to be here and to serve in this way. Bless he and his family. Hold them close. Uh, Father, uh, give him a moose. Uh, he's been out hunting. Help with that. Uh, Father, we pray your blessing to be upon others in our church family. If any with ailments, hold them close and bless them each one. So receive our thanks. Let your mercies attend in this time. For Christ's sake, we ask your grace. Amen. We will uh, carry on with some announcements. Glenn's got some changes back there and um, back there up here on your screen. Uh, the prayer requests are at uh, Chetwin Baptist at Gmail. Has that changed from one prayer? Sorry, no, I got those backwards. The prayer request is still the original one. The e-transfer should be that new one you see there, chatwinbaptist.gmail.com. I'll fix the slide for next week, sorry. So, uh, and just the background on that, as we are changing from Pris over to TELUS, uh, our Pris email will eventually go away. There'll be some overlap period here, but you can start sending the e-transfers to that new address you see there, chatwinbaptist.gmail.com. 
and those will be deposited in the bank. Okay, just throw on that page if you need to know, if you need the help or whatever, that'll be good. Okay, uh, and you have prayer requests, send them in. We get prayer requests all the time and uh, uh, different things. People from out of town phone and say, hey, uh, somebody who's on the island we're praying for this week, and I haven't heard any outcome of that story there. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, loved ones have been falling with ailments and whatever. And uh, I had a good time this week. I took Bob Nicholson for a drive with the, the little pick-me-up truck and up into the towers, the wind towers and whatever. We were, it was quite a good time fellowship together we had, and so that was good. So uh, just pray for those folk that are locked in uh, and whatever and can't get out much and that your grace will be upon them. I was blessed to be at the hospital with some of the older folk this week and just encouraging them. So uh, just pray for these folk that are shut in and whatever through this time. Uh, you have your liberty through your health to be able to run around. They don't. And then the loneliness of the story is, is, the, is the sad part. Uh, so pray for those people, if nothing else, and uh, that somebody would... would Around, around to encourage them. Let's uh, turn to the uh, screen and sing another song. And uh, it's satisfied. We haven't sang this in quite a while. All my life long I was uh, panted for a draft from some cool spring. That word drought, uh, draft, a draft is a beer at the store, whatever, with a drink from some cool spring that I hope would quench the burning of the thirst I found within. Hallelujah, I found them. We trust this is your testimony. Life long I had panted for a drought from some cool spring that I hope would catch the burning of the thirst I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him in my soul so long as craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, through his blood I now am saved. Feeding on the had an interesting week and uh, time off with Josh preaching last week. We trust you enjoyed that message. If you hadn't tuned in to the message from last week, uh, go tune in. It's a good word. And uh, we've got a good young man there. And um, yeah, I didn't preach as long as we give him, but uh, that's okay. Not too many preachers get shot down for preaching too short and, uh, and whatever. But um, uh, I got a, some thoughts this morning that might uh, take a little more time with some of the scriptures and whatever, but uh, our worship of God is not about time. Don't set your watch. Don't come set your watch. And uh, so there's lots of jokes about preachers and preaching overtime and all that kind of stuff and whatever. And the one guy, a preacher, uh, noticed a man get up in the middle of the service and and he left. And then at the end of the service, he came back to pick up his wife and uh, he said, uh, um, he says, where did you go in the middle of the service? He said, I went to get my hair cut. He says, well, why didn't you wait till after the service? And uh, it was something strange about what it was. It wasn't, I didn't need it when I was in the service. And his hair grew that much in the length of the sermon. So um, it's kind of cute. But we got some thoughts this morning. Our, our pastors meet in town here. We meet uh, monthly anyhow, and they get together and just uh, whatever. We, we talked about our time on television. We got our things. And pray for me for Tuesday, if you would. Uh, and actually, if you get any prayer that uh, any special prayer requests that we need, send them in. But this week, Tuesday uh, afternoon, I'm down taping the two messages. We do, each of us do two 14-minute messages. We tape those, and then they put them up on the television, and they mix and match and, and whatever. Uh, so 
And when that's happening for me this week, I got to uh, somehow I, my seniority didn't pull rank on anybody, and I got stuck being the guy on this first time up. And then we'll have Christmas messages uh, in our next series that we go through. But uh, we get together and we discuss things. And one of the things that it struck me is, is kind of uh, whatever it was, uh, it was the attitude and across the board attitudes of Christians regarding this COVID story. And, uh, and the biggest cry is the government has no right to put bans on us or insist things of us. And, and, and all around the table, that was the same story. People, pastors just saying, what is with people, these things? We, we spend time and energy sitting with you. I spent three hours with a young man one day and arguing and these, these kind of things. And not, not arguing with that, but just discussing and setting things out about it. And ivermectin change it, challenge, cures it in three days. Well, uh, we fell in our church here three days. He was over the symptoms. It depends on your health. But a little lady from Fort St. John's fighting for her life in Prince. 27-week-old baby in her womb, trying to live. And it, it hits those people, whatever. Uh, so our discussion went on to discuss some of the things. In Leviticus 13, 45 and 46, here was a government restriction. Put on by God, as for the leper who has the infection, his clothes shall be torn, and the hair of his head shall be uncovered, and he shall cover his mustache and cry. Unclean, unclean. I don't know why he's got to cover his mustache, but he had to cry unclean, unclean to anybody that came near him. He shall remain unclean all the days during which he has the infection. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. How much more planner do you need for the government to say you can't put lockdowns on us? Yes, I can. That's it. It's, God did this here. He said that's the law for dealing with leprosy. Why? Because these leprous people, and they found out with leprosy, and there's a leprosy mission, leprosy Collins, and they found out that moms would get leprosy, and the kids would get it. And why? Because the kids are in little backpacks or in the front packs, and they're rubbing his little head on mom's chest or mom's skin, and this is passed on to children that way. And so they caught on that it was a contact thing was the issue for leprosy. Stand back, I'm unclean. A mustache story, I don't understand. But his head had to be clean. Why? Because the head is where you would see the, the hair affected and you would see the, the issues on the head and whatever. So unclean, unclean, remain unclean until the day and he's living outside the camp. How do you argue the government has no right? I don't know. Wrestle with that yourself. And then more closely is another story. In Numbers 21, 1 to 3, there's a story, not yet, Glenn. In 1 to 3, there's a story of they were going into promised land, and uh, they, this king comes out and fights them, and they, they get a few people taken captive, captive, and they pray and they ask God for help, and God says, okay, and he helps them, and they go in and they wipe out these people. And then, so with that, their um, uh, blessing comes. And then shortly and typically after this, the people of God, looks what we find happens, and here it comes. This is God's been shortly after if they forget, and here, beloved, I should have got Glenn to make a slide for this. Beloved, they enter into careless selfishness. Careless selfishness. Look at what the Word says in verse 5. This is the people of God. The people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we loathe, what, this miserable food. Which was, God says, people ate angel food. Not angel food, cake, angel food, this manna. And they said, we are so fed up with this stupid food. There's no food, there's no water. We loathe this miserable food. Careless selfishness. Does it fit anything we have in our world? We're talking about evangelicals. We're not talking about the world. They're lost, they're dark, they're blind. People of God, oh, I have my rights. We're fed up with the stupid food. And then verse 6, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. The Hebrew says the word there are many, an abundance of people died. Keep that thought, an abundance of people died. Many people of Israel died. So, blatant wickedness, careless selfishness, and punishment is the reward. Abundance of people died. The, the Hebrew word for died there is muth. They were muthed. It was a muthing experience. They just died. Why? Because their heart 
went to careless selfishness, blatant wickedness. Now, the, you hear the word or hear the word thrown around, I don't believe that's. Here's a sketchy response to this story. You know the story. It's a, but there's a sketchy response. Look at verse 8. It says, and so the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard, on a pole, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looked at it, will live. Oh, yeah, sure, that's going to work. Make a snake, put it up on a pole. That's the symbol you see on your health care things, your medic alert and all that kind of stuff, snake on a pole. Some argue uh, it, it was a, a cross. And some, oh, no, uh, the torture stake had to be a stake, not the cross, our, our witness friends, and whatever. He says, make a snake, put it on a pole, that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, will live. Oh, come on, don't be goofy. I look at some snake on a pole. What if I live away across town, away across country? I'm the far end of, of Israel's nation as we're traveling across. What if I, oh, I got to walk all the way over and see that snake? Well, he says, that's what you got to do if you want to live. Seems sketchy to me. But in verse 9, and Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And, beloved, pay attention to these things. And it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked at the bronze serpent, ta-da, he lived. When he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. People are dying. All kinds of sketchy stuff out there. Sketchy information. Sketchy on both sides. Sketchy what you say. The stats seem to be argued fairly easily. We got a whole bunch of people in the north that are saying, we'll not believe this sketchy story. So we have to ship their loved ones out of town. As our hospital staff are worked off their feet. I asked a girl at the hospital, I said, do you live here? So the last three times I've been there over the last two weeks, this woman's been working right at like a Banshee in a hospital. I said, do you live here? They're being worked hard, but we don't want our situation of lockdown, of government control, it says. So the sketchy remedy the sketchy remedy worked for those who looked, for those who dared to look. I guess looking, believing, Jesus says, if you don't do it, however, it's not a faith, it's sin. But they looked because that's what Moses said and God said I was supposed to do. They looked and they lived. There was an abundance of them that died. We're not told how many lived, but the ones that didn't, the ones that got bit, were lived when they did this. That's my introduction. Let's pray and ask God's help. Father, we thank you for your word. It challenges us to be careful. Oh, God, help us to be careful of careless selfishness. Careless selfishness. Because it reveals a wicked heart. 1 Corinthians 11, our communion table says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and people even sleep. And God, you just take their life because of their living. And we ask God you'd help us to pay attention to the words we have before us. Uh, we're not here to take leers. We want to find the truth of your word. Bless our hearts with it. And encourage us, oh God. So hear our prayer and bless. We ask your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we have here is um, God gives directives with threats. God gives directives with threats. If you don't know them, you've heard them. We're thrown out there all the time. Romans 13 uh, one first, it says, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. Okay, so the governing authorities. Town council, when I was doing my hunting course, I canceled it. Why? Because and my core people said, yes, you were responsible to obey the laws of your area and whatever. And says, I talked to the city and then the bylaw officer says, yes, the government's saying double vax or whatever. So if I show up there and people don't have their double vax or whatever, whatever. But that wasn't even so much the area. I could have sneaked it in. But guess what? If somebody got brought COVID there and got COVID there and they trace it all back, who wears that? Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill does not want to be stuck in a situation where I own, I ran a course, regardless of what the government said, I ran a course, somebody got sick and somebody died. I could, in essence, be sued or whatever. Church could be sued for letting this dummy run something like that, not having that kind of wisdom. Every person should be in subjection to the governing authorities. Why? For there is no authority and pay attention except from God. Except from God. And those which exist are established, arranged is the word, arranged by God. Let's go to verse 2. Therefore, 
important word in your Bible. Anytime you see a therefore, check what it's there for. Therefore, in light of that, whoever resists authority, resists, thor- this resist is a, it's a, it's a one, one of them words, resist for yourself. So you, you stand up and, and whatever, it's, it, I, I, it's one of those middle words that reflects back on, I resist. I have my right to resist. He says, whoever resists authority has opposed, stood against the ordinance, the, the arrangement of God. Does that not bother your head to read such things? I'm resisting. I, I will not uh, bow down and do what, this, what the government says. Because why? Well, God says, you're not arguing with the government. You're arguing with me. Resist the authority has opposed the ordinance of God. And they who have opposed, pay attention, will receive judgment upon themselves. Condemnation, not necessarily condemned as we did condemnation. It's a poor word because the word is crino. It's got to do with judgment. You'll be judged against. You might not be condemned, lost eternally. But like 1 Corinthians 11 says, you might just get put to sleep. You know, you get a dog run over on the road and you can't be fixed very well or it's cruel to let him suffer or whatever like that. You put him to sleep. And they who have opposed will receive judgment upon themselves. Directives with threats. Right there in your book. If you're paying attention to it. God gives directives. He goes on from there. And uh, 1 Peter 2. Now you got Peter and Paul. Down in Kamloops, they have on the Indian Reserve, there's two mountains. And uh, because of the influence, the religious influence, Paul is the smaller one, Peter's the bigger one. And uh, so these two mountains are there, Paul and Peter. Therefore, this is Peter writing, I'm in 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 2, and verse 13. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to king as the one in authority, or to the governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God. What? The will of God. I'm supposed to be concerned about that. For such is the will of God that doing right, by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Yeah, there's people out there in the world. Let the world say, I don't believe it, I don't care, and whatever, and let them, now sadly not let them, but they will end up in hell because of their carelessness. I don't believe if you argue this situation, if you're really a child of God, you don't lose your salvation, but you get to the back row of heaven and you might get there sooner than you want to think. For such is the will of God that doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Honor all people. And there it is. We don't need to be fighting somebody, run down, mad at those people that are whatever, that don't wear masks and whatever. Somebody said, I read a YouTube article, a lady coughed in some cancer patient's face, and she got 30 days in jail. That's good enough. She should have got more if I was a judge. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. We got to work through this together. There's no room for running each other down, whatever. But let's try to live in light of the word of God, this book here. Holy Bible. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Oh, my. Fear God and honor the king. If you don't like what the king is doing, you pray. If you don't like the king throwing you in the fiery furnace, he would get in his face and take up arms. No, that didn't work for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They just said, must be God's will. We go in the furnace. He'd take care of us if we want. Did you read that story? Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. king wants me thrown in the fiery furnace. I'm going to go in there smiling because my being in the fiery furnace, what we've said, it's not your problem. It's God's. And God brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out because someone looked like the Son of God was in there with them. What's God say to us when he makes threats? He makes directives with threats. He says, bring yourself in line. Bring yourself in line. The second point. This is worse. God makes directives with threats. Jesus enters the scene. Let's see what he says. Jesus questions whose side are you on? Jesus questions whose side are you on? So watch what you're doing. In Matthew 16, 1, we see this. He says, the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing Jesus. There's the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Pharisees are those guys so full of themselves. Well, I know better than anybody, and I'm just the smartest person in the world, and, and whatever, that's me. I'm a Pharisee. And we joke about the Pharisee. He's stuck on himself. He's so fair. You want to remember what the word Pharisee means. He's somebody full of himself. And I'm so fair, I see. He looks in the mirror, and I'm so fair, I see. 
That's how you remember your Pharisee. The Sadducees were uh, same idea, only one step goofier. And their goofy attitude was, we don't believe in the resurrection. No such thing as resurrection. And uh, Paul would use that to get the two of the guys in a room one time. And Paul stands up and he says, I'm here because of that. I stand for the resurrection of the, of, of God can resurrect me with the Sadducees. No, you can't do that. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees are all fighting each other. This is how smart these people are. And Jesus says this about them. The Pharisees said she came testing Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's a smart one, eh? Uh, let's test Jesus. We're so smart. Let's test him. And they asked him, show them a sign from heaven. Now, beloved, we see, and I, sure, this, this COVID story could be the birth pangs talked about in Matthew 24 of the end of the things, wrapping her all up. It can well be, but nowhere do you find I'm supposed to be all beat out of shape and disobey and do whatever. That's not what I'm supposed to do. And so he says, they asked for a sign from heaven. That's in verse 1. Verse 2 and following, tells in verse 4. But he replied to them, when it is evening, you say it is fair weather, for the sky is red. If you pay attention, the pink sky at night is going to be a nice calm night, sailor's delight. And in the morning, if there's some pink sky in the sky, the wind is coming, usually with warm wind from the south, and you, you know those things. Uh, you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Now, he's talking to these people who are supposed to be followers and involved in the relationship with Jesus, with, with, with God. But an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and a sign will not be given it except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. So what's he challenged there, the sign of Jonah? Hey, if you read back in your Bible, if you listen to what you learned in the past, there was a man named Jonah, three days in the belly of a fish. Why? Because he disobeyed God. The powers that be are ordained by God. Do what they tell you or suffer judgment. Jonah disobeyed God, suffered judgment. And he compares these people, the Sadducees, Pharisees, watch out for those guys. He left them and went away. Did I give you verse 6 there, Glenn? I think, yeah. It says, and Jesus said, watch out then, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There's leaven out there. There's stuff that's wrong and it's going to permeate. And leaven is good case when it's in your bread and whatever, but he uses the picture of that which can permeate. And uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Pharisees, I test. Sadducees are just dumb. And he says, be careful of that attitude because it permeates and gets in. Beloved, our pastors are talking, and this seems to be the story that we have from evangelicals in our world, in our North America, and Canada, and our town, and, and around. That we know better. Watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. It permeates, it gets in. And, and they want to argue. They want to cough on somebody who's, who's got cancer and, and, and whatever. Like, it's your right. Um... That's dental work, had you done it to me. Jesus questions, whose side are you on? Watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees, because if evil permeates, per permeates to evil. Well, if we're going to permeate the good, and that's what we want, is permeate the good, and the Word of God is where the good is found. The flesh, the world, and the devil all want to permeate towards evil. So then... He goes on from here. Further down, Matthew 16, is the story carries on. And we have the account there of verse uh, 21. And it says, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem for many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Now we know that to be history. We know that that happened and whatever. We know what happened also. That Peter... And the Greek here is an interesting thing. He says, Jesus, Jesus, come. And he walked away and he said, Peter, this can't happen to you. This, this can't happen to you. This is never going to happen. God forbid that that could ever happen to you. God forbid that that would ever happen to you. And, and he, but he took him away from himself. Again, in middle form. He took him away from himself and he said this, God forbid this can't happen for you. This shall never happen to you. And when he, when he says, God forbid, the idea there is this, I'm heaping. You are, you are too. And he words, uh, Timothy is the word given to a child is, is to be honored. And it's, it's upon honoring. And he wants to heap. No, you're too valuable. You're too good. This can't happen to you. This can't happen to you. This shall never happen to you. And he's hyping this. Uh, uh, epi honor on, on Jesus. And then he says, this can never happen, no way, not on my watch will this happen. 
Mark 8.32 adds to the discussion because it says that Jesus turned to the disciples. And it seems, one scholar says, he's turned his back on Peter and is looking towards the disciples and he says, Peter, get behind me. Get behind me because you're on Satan's side. You're not on mine. You, you're not thinking the thinking of God. You're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about Israel and being this big nation and being whatever. Get behind me, Satan, he says. You're not on my side. He's not even facing Peter when he says that, it seems to Mark. Talking to the disciples, looking, facing the disciples, saying, Peter, get behind me. He's already placed him behind me. Get behind me, Satan. What you're saying is scandalous. Scandal means to have a stumbling block. You want to trip me up and knock me down so that I can't do what God wants me to do. Where are we? Where are we? If Jesus doesn't go to the cross, we're in hell. That's where we belong. We fight and say, what? Well, one of the verses at the end says, we'll not have this man reign over us. He sent some people out in the vineyard, bought a vineyard, did some things with talents. And they said, we'll not have this man reign over us. And he says, oh, Peter, get behind me, Satan. He called him Satan. You're paying attention to the things of man, not the things of God. Scandalous, Peter. You don't care about the mind of the things of God. You're caring about man. So let's get blatant. Our third point. The devil's in the details. I sit with people and I say this. They say, I, I don't know what to do, Pastor. I, my job's on the line if I, don't take the, uh, if I don't take the vaccine. My job's on the line. I says, well, I've got to wrestle the truth, son. But I said, what you need to know is I need to tell you, your pastor. The devil wants you dead. The devil wants you dead. The devil's in the details. John 8, 43 uh, to 45, look what we have there. And here he says, he says, why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he's a liar of the, and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. And he said, what, Peter? You're behind me, Satan. And this is what Satan wants. I want to lie to you. I want to trip you up. I want to cheat you because I want you dead. If we can understand, he wants us dead. That's the devil's plan. He somehow thinks in his little brain that you and I in hell with him will turn down the thermostat a bit and it won't. The devil's in the details. You can't hear my word because you're listening to everything else. I speak the truth, and you don't believe me. John 10 says there, the thief, Jesus talking, the thief comes only to steal and to kill. So he steals a sheep, and then he kills it. And with that, he destroys the outcome of that story. Where, you know, there's a biblical story about that thing right there. Where did it happen? Who took that man's lamb like it was his daughter and killed it and celebrated supper? You did, David. You did. Great man of God. You did, David. The thief comes to steal. He stole that lamb because he didn't want to kill his own because it was going to cost this rich man a little bit of money. And he says... You stole that lamb. You killed and had a meal. You destroyed that family. Who did that? You did, David, a great man of God. You see, judgment. David didn't lose his salvation. But he got a good smack down by God. The thief, the devil, comes to steal. Steals what's not his. He'll kill it. He'll destroy it. And he wants to destroy us by doing those things. It'll be our loved one. It'll be our possessions. It'll be whatever. You're so violated if something ever and it steals your stuff. You're violated by that. It takes away. You can't sleep. And what's that noise? Someone breaking in my house. I went hunting one day. I give house. I said to Karen, I was, where'd you park the rabbit last night? She said, in the driveway. So we keep it in the driveway usually. And we don't keep it in the fridge. And where'd you park the rabbit? And she said, in the driveway. I said, well, it's not there. And someone stole my car. 
I left a key inside there, and they were going through looking for change, and bottom of the change pile, they found this key, so they took the car. And then I had a cop say to me, I'm going to ask the corporal, we don't have to give you a charge. I blow people's minds when I say that. Yeah, it was an accessory by leaving that key in there, according to the Motor Vehicle Act. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And so you're nervous for a long time. The devil's in the details. He wants you dead. Understand that, my friend at home. Understand that, my friend, if you're listening from the church. The devil wants you dead. He won't quit. He won't give up. You try to worship God, I'll try to chip you up and stop you. I'll put things in your ears, whisper in your ears. That's crazy. Whatever. He wants you dead. Understand that. Revelation 9 and 10 makes this statement. The great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan. And he deceives the world. Deceives the world. Be careful of that. It's out there, that word. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, and he accuses them before God day and night. So what's his plan? He's a deceiver, and he accuses people. And I spend my time as a pastor telling people, don't let the devil beat up on you. People haven't been in church for a while. Well, I feel so bad about not having been there and whatever. And I said, don't believe the devil's lie. That's, you're not welcome. Don't believe the devil's lie that you shouldn't go back. Because why? Because he wants you dead. The devil's in the details. He wants you dead. He accuses, well, you think you're smart enough or good enough. You can walk back in church and they should love you and forgive you. Don't believe that lie. It's the devil's lie. He's trying to deceive you. Get yourself back in church, which is where you need to be, because you're breaking the commandment of God. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Devil's lies is they, you don't need to go there, because they're going to look at you weird. He wants you dead. He steals, he kills, he destroys. Luke 22, 31. Peter, again, Jesus says, the devil's asked to have you, demanded that to have you, and let you sift him like wheat. And I don't want to stand quite sifting like wheat. He's going to get rid of the whatever. But he wants to use you for his purpose. And I prayed for you, Peter. So there he has. Let's get blatant. The devil wants you dead. I've already told you the blatant the other part. Is that Christ wants us to have a full life. We talked at our Thanksgiving steak night. Does the Bible talk about stuffing? Yeah, it does. When you give, it'll be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, stuffed. But Jesus here in John 10 says, Simon, uh, let's go back to this, John 10, please if I can, Glenn. And it says, the thief comes only to kill and to steal. I came, I came, Jesus says, that they may have life and have it to the, to the full abundance. Stuffed in. Abundance. Christ wants us to have a full life. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. We know it, that we have eternal life. The devil wants you eternally dead, suffering with him. Jesus wants you to have eternal life. 1427, very important verse. You work through this idea in scriptures. God calls you to peace. This is peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. I want you to have peace, Jesus says. I don't know how to make that more blatant. Jesus says, I love you enough. I came from heaven's glory to die for you so that you could have my peace that I give. You, you can have my abundant life. You can have eternal life. I came from heaven to do that for you. Don't get caught up in the devil's details. He wants you dead. He wants you dead. Pay attention. Full life, 1 Peter 2.12 we saw 13 and 14. Look what Peter says before that verse. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. The world is looking on. And evangelicalism has run around like chickens with their heads cut off and said, well, we, we, we got to turn off the story of Jesus here and tell people don't take the vaccine or, or uh, whatever. The government has no right and whenever. And where does that save anybody? It doesn't. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds, as, as they observe them, Glorify God in the day of visitation. 
If you've got a bad mouth of stores, it's got to make you wear a mask. Your Christian testimony, I hope you're not a member of this church. The government's issues are who's going to pay the bills? We have free medical in our country. Some of the issues. Glorify God in the day of visitation because I saw Tommy in the midst of whatever say, hey, we got to wear a mask. The government says so. Tommy doesn't know Jesus. He says, the government says so. I'm walking with Tommy. One of my good friends in town, uh, I pray for him lots and whatever. He was mad. He's just, people came and infected a bunch of his family with it. He's just mad. And I said, yeah, I know the story. Numbers 20. We did 21. Okay, we did that story. Before that happened, here's what we have. The story of the sketchy story of the serpent on the pole. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock. God was talking to Moses. They're complaining about things. We don't make water. It's okay. We need water. So he gathers people before the rock. Moses was told, you know the story you can do for homework if you want to read the early part of the passage. He says, Moses, and I get the people together. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Pay attention. He says, speak to the rock. He says, he said to them, listen now, you rebels. Shall we bring forth water for you out of this rock? He throws a little rhetorical question. Well, what do you say we bring water out of this rock? Well, that got their attention. Okay. Uh, Verse 11. He says, Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And water came forth abundantly. Oh, we want water. Well, there it comes abundantly. And the congregation and their beasts drank. Moses struck the rock twice. Okay, let's have verse 12. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Therefore you will not bring them in. All you did was what? You struck the rock twice. I told you to speak to it. You broke the law of God. You don't lose your salvation, Moses and Aaron. You don't lose those. You just don't get to go into the promised land. You're leading these great people to do all this great thing, and you get to look from a mountain, the beauties and the glories of Mount Pisgah, and you do not enter the land, and we don't even find your body to have a memorial stone for people to worship because you've not believed me. You treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Judgment, threat of promise, if we disobey God. He hits us hard. Luke, our conclusion, Luke 19, 11 to 27, uh, yeah, has a story there. And this is the one where he says, to say the citizens hated him. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. And he goes back to verse 27, and he says the same thing. But these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. Be careful you don't show yourself to be on the wrong side of God. To the world as it looks on, to the churches it looks on, and whatever, these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. Did I give you Luke 12, 57? Why do you not even on your own initiative judge what is right? This is Jesus talking, beloved. The heart of God in a human form, standing on earth, talking with his disciples and his followers, the Jewish people and whatever. Why do you not even on your own initiative judge what is right? Just judge what is right. Bring in line your thinking with the word of God, not with what the other sides of Google or Facebook says. Bring your thinking in line with the Word of God. There are serious matters here, beloved. There are serious matters of our rewards as we stand before God. Blatantly, the devil wants you dead. If you don't understand that, well, take your Bible and read it more, and you'll see how often. He wanted Jesus to bow down and worship him. He says, I want to be like the Most High because he can't be higher than the Most High. He's full of himself. He's this deceiver, awful person who's doomed to eternity and separation and torment away from God. But Jesus says, I come that you might have life to the full. I want you to be stuffed with my blessings. I want you alive, eternal life. I want you to have peace while you live here. Be blessed in your heart. I trust our hearts will be encouraged with those things. Our closing hymn is, Search me, O God. Cleanse me. 
And after this, Glenn will dismiss us in prayer. If you would, ask blessing on our week and encourage us. I trust our hearts will be encouraged. Beloved, we're not here to tickle your ears. Uh, the Word of God is the Word of God. It's serious. We must pay attention. Uh, I trust you'll be encouraged with those things. Thank you. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and sin. Mrs. Emperor, please. Thank you. Dear Jesus, uh, we've uh, discussed some serious matters uh, this morning, and uh, and they truly are, Lord. Uh, when we when we think that the devil wants us dead, that's that's no no joking matter, and and yet uh, we are reminded that Jesus is life, and Jesus, you are truth, and uh, that can encourage us this week. God, you also want to give us peace. Um, the world uh, doesn't give peace, rather trouble and fear, and yet uh, w if we look to you, we can have that as one of your promises. God, I pray that uh, you would help us to judge what is right, bring our thinking in line, as Bill says, with, uh, with the word of God, um, Lord, that we would, uh, we would seek you out during all this if we are unsure of, uh, of what we should do or, or decisions to make. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would... Uh, we would look for your heart in, in all of this. We would look for your truth in your word. Um, Lord, I pray that you would just encourage us this week um, as we go. Bless each family and each heart that is listening to this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.